everybody. Josh Wilson, and this is the Big Dog Podcast. Got Jonathan Mack in the studio as always. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. We're rocking a little earlier than normal. So I kind of got the morning voice going on. Yeah. And you just always got that smooth, sultry. Just <laughs> I try. I try. The Jonathan Mack tone, everybody. Um, anyway, kind of got a quick hit for you this morning. Um, so I'm, I'm listening to different podcasts, and I listen to audio books and different interviews and stuff. And I heard an interview with a gentleman named Robin Sharma, who apparently is like super famous and really well known in like the, um, mental health, um, coaching, you know, personal improvement space. Dude was an attorney, um, in his mid twenties, wrote a book on like mindset, time management, and, you know, started doing coaching and personal development and stuff like that and oh. has, has made a crazy career out of it. What kind of attorney? Um, I don't know. I don't know what kind of attorney he was. Yeah, we usually uh, root for the defense ones. <laughs> <laughs> Fool. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, he's being interviewed and he's talking about this new book, um, or this book that he has, Everyday Hero. And um, he, he made a comment. I'm just driving. I'm driving down the road and, you know, it, as most people probably do when they're listening to interviews or audio books or podcasts, like your mind is focused on the task at hand. So I'm driving, maybe I'm thinking about 8,000 other things that may be going on in my mind, in my life at the moment. But then at the same time, you're also listening and paying attention. Well, this one comment was made and it, I heard the comment and I literally had to go back to it four or five times because every time I heard it, it took me down a rabbit hole, kind of processing it. And I stopped listening to what he was talking about to dive in a little more. So I had to keep going back. But the comment that stood out to me and what I want to talk to you guys about this morning is we are born into perfection. And then we are, then we are seduced into average. So we're all born perfect. We're all born with uh, unique abilities traits, skill sets, but we're seduced into average. And how are we seduced into average? Unique kids are often labeled as certain things, right? Well, you, you have this, that's why you're not a good student. You have this, that's why you're incapable of staying focused and paying attention. So let's, let's get you medicated. You've got, you know, your behavior is unacceptable. Um, for whatever, and we want to label and kind of categorize Medicaid, not saying all things maybe shouldn't be, but we're very quick to do that. And a lot of times I think what, what it is, it it is the things that make us unique that people want to try to contain. And so by being seduced into average, it's, it's programming really, you know, and it's things that the school deems acceptable. It's things that uh, media, what we feed ourselves and consume, deem acceptable. So if everything's constantly telling you, if you're born perfect, you're born with these unique abilities, you are born, everybody I believe is born with a purpose to have an impact in some way, shape, or form. But the entire world around you, including parents, aunts, uncles, coworkers, friends, and we've talked about this before in a more broader sense, but that seduction to average away from your personal perfection is really molded by everybody that's around you and what you consume. And so we've talked a lot about like your circle and your group, but it's way bigger than that. It's stuff that you're not even paying attention to. It's words that you, you, you read and consume. It's news that you listen to. It is teachers. It can be pastors. It can be like all these things mold, but everything really does kind of funnel and dive everything into what? Mainstream. What is the norm? Because when everybody just kind of operates normal, there's minimal what? Opportunity for disruption. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I think that you're right in the nature versus nurture aspect of that because I think that there's a lot of uh, societal structures that kind of force us or kind of mold us into being much less unique. 
I wouldn't oh, necessarily sure. agree with everybody who's born perfect, but I will agree with everybody's 100% born unique. Sure. And I think that things such as school, um, for instance, the school system is essentially designed for you to be like, you're here from seven in the morning until two in the afternoon, three in the afternoon. This is what you do. This is what you're going to do your entire adult life. They don't really preach to you or teach you any of the alternative methods other than you're going to go to school. You're going to get out. You're going to get a job that pays you enough, but not as much as you'd like. And you're going to work a nine to five. Yep. Uh, It sounds kind of rude, but I just kind of refer to people who are okay with that as NPCs. It's a video game turn. Yep. Non-player controlled. Yeah. Just what are you doing? Just living. But you have to, but everybody falls into this. You know, I'm 43 years old and there's a period of my life where I've fallen into that. You know, you're, you're early mid twenties. You've grown up in that. And you had to make the, the reason when you started choosing different things for your path than what everybody else thought it would always be. There was a lot of pushback. There's uh, currently pushback. And there's still pushback right? every time I go home. And so, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, and it's not. And I live at home. It's <laughs> You're killing me this morning. <laughs> it, it's not a lack of care. It's really out of concern. But it's based upon the framework of which they view the world and what's acceptable and what's not. And and that's okay. And what I mean, I want to go back to your point about everyone being perfect. I want to clarify that. Everyone is born perfect, as in at that point in time, right? Like the sky's the limit. The opportunities are boundless. Like there, there's 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 nothing that can or cannot be accomplished. Nothing has dug into them, regardless of their circumstances, regardless of the family that they're born into, regardless of, well. You know, if you're born in America, let's put it this way, okay? There's a lot of places on this planet that you can be born, and it's going to be a little bit tougher. But until we start feeding these things into our kids, into our friends, they don't know anything. I was talking to a good buddy of mine these last couple days who I was traveling with, and we were talking about our kids, and he made the statement, and I really hope that he's right. He goes, I think that my kids' kids will will be that first generation that really does not see or know of racism. And I was like, damn. Like, that's two. We're talking about two generations. And I still think racism is, I mean, yeah. Right. Like I, I think it's very prevalent still, but we were talking about his kid, his kid's mindset, his kid's mentality. We were talking about my kids and, you know, we had a pretty lengthy discussion on it, but I was like, what, what they are taught from us coming up is different than things that were in place when I was coming up. Right. Cause I see the world differently than my great grandparents saw the world. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just construct and it's that change. And it's like, however, one of the points we made was, so we're having those conversations about our kids. And then I think about conversations with other people's kids, different areas, different households. And that's what I told him. I said, I don't know that in two generations that's actually feasible because there's plenty of places in this country alone where for as much as we teach our kids that there's no difference like my kids aren't like oh that person's black like hey this is my buddy you know this is whoever this is a kid from my class this is there's nothing like that but there's plenty right reality there are plenty of households that are raising their kids same ages with very different yeah input so i don't know that those two pieces two two steps away are accurate, but it comes back to that piece where it's like when these kids are born from perfect, what I mean is clarity. There isn't um, default thoughts. I think everybody has an innate right and wrong, but our families start feeding what those parameters and stuff are going to be and those limitations. 
And then you get out of the house, you're a little kid, you get out of the house to your point. Now you're in school and school is prepping you for one thing to go into the workforce or go to college when you graduate. And when you go to college, it's to go into different parts of the workforce. Anybody who comes in, it's like, I'm going to do this. You're crazy. You need to go get your degree. I think I'm going to start this. I have this idea. No, 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 no. Put that away. You can't do that. You need to go get your degree. No, you need to go work for so-and-so. Well, I have this incredible idea. Nope. That's nuts. Man, are you stupid? Go get a job. How are you going to live? What are you going to do? That ain't right. People don't do that. All the, think about all the things as a society the world doesn't experience because for every one Bill Gates, every one Steve Jobs, every one Elon Musk, every one Jeff Bezos, hundreds of thousands of kids, no, you can't do that. And they believe it. How many things will we never know about, will never experience, because someone believed the individual who said, no, you can't do that. And they believed it. Yeah, in my general experience, most people are what uh, uh, my generation likes to call scary. Is in not like, oh, I'm scared of them, but like they're just scary people. Is in like they're afraid of everything. They yeah. don't want to take risks. They don't want to make that leap. And I mean, it's no shade. Like I have a degree. Go get your degree. Yeah, I'm not but, saying don't. But yeah. like if you're looking for any sort of fulfillment from that degree or you think that your life is going to be laid out in a specific way because you got said degree in America, we've been telling kids for 50 plus years that getting a degree is what you need to achieve the highest standard of living. Correct. And now we're here and everybody has degrees and we're all broke. <laughs> You're right. You're right. So, and it's a stepping stone. I mean, it's, I, I for years I've been saying a, a, a bachelor's degree is the new high school diploma and damn near a GED. There, I don't really know there's a big leg up with that bachelor's anymore. You got to go get this. You got to go do that. And there's not, nothing wrong with those things. But like, if you're not putting it towards something that you care about and are passionate about, it, the, the lack of fulfillment is going to be ridiculous. All this to say, I don't want to turn this into a school talk, <laughs> but it, it's, it's about that kind of funnel effect where all these surrounding forces are really there, intentional or not, everything that you consume to funnel you into a standard of mediocrity and average. Everyone operates within that. Everyone. No one is immune to that. However, I wanted to talk about this so that you at least start thinking about it, like to your own personal perspective. Do I allow myself to be constrained by what my surroundings consider uh, acceptable and average? Or am I operating such an, on what I feel like puts me in the most ideal position to find happiness, to be fulfilled, to impact my communities, to impact the world? And that's how I make base decisions and move forward and progress. Or as I start to get off the rails, as people would say, I think about your bowling and you got the bumpers, right? It's like, hey, as long as you stay within these bumpers, you're going to hit some pins at the end. The pins being you're going to be able to live and contribute to society, pay your taxes, have some retirement at the end maybe. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But you start to get too far off that path, boom, those bumpers, what are they going to do? It's going to kick that ball right back in place, right? Because you're going to get down there. It's If you're playing with bumpers, no one's ever impressed, though. What's the impact? Who gets hype when you get a strike bowling with the bumpers? Nobody. You stay, you're in the bumpers. I got to the end line. Well, of course you did. You know, we, we throw these huge graduation parties when kids graduate high school. 
damn, homie, this is the easiest thing you'll ever do in your life. It is. It's definitely up there. It, it is. But there's this huge, massive success. And like these parties and celebrations. And I'll do the same for my kids. Right? I mean, we will. We'll take some big trip. I mean, is it a milestone? 100%. But you ain't done nothing. Yeah, I have a personal beef with all the kids who invited me to their college graduation parties because it's like, we went to school together. You know I'm too broke to get you a gift. <laughs> right. But that's besides the Here, point. Can I send you, um, here's, I got five bucks in my Venmo. I'm just going <laughs> to, or Cash App, I'm going to send it over to you. I've had to Venmo those sons and daughters of CEOs too much already. I'm not doing it again. <laughs> You're done. I'm not You're doing done. it again. So, but you know what I mean, though? Like, no one's impressed by anybody who gets the inline line bouncing off the bumpers. Yeah. Because everybody's going to get that. You already know. You already know the outcome. And that's why the outliers, everybody's impressed by the, the lady or the dude who gets up there and he's just, she's a strike, 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 just killing it. And the ball rides the edge and curls back and spins back, takes out all the pins. People pay attention to that. People are like, damn, that's special. And it's over and over and over and over again. Because they're not scared of going in the gutter. They're not scared. They'll risk it. How many times did the people who bowl like that and ride that line, how many times did they gutter ball as they were getting better? Because you can't learn to ride that line with the bumpers. And that's the thing, though, is that uh, to that analogy, it sucks because society... Once you, once you tell society, hey, I want to play with the bumpers down. I don't want to play within these kind of confines. And then you roll a gutter ball. Everybody looks at you and is like, well, you could have played with the bumpers. You could have. You could have. I could have played with the bumpers. And I could have been set and constrained for life. And that's, that's the reality of all this, guys, is if you can be aware of the bumpers in your life, just be aware of them aware of the bumpers in your life, figure out how to drop them so you can play outside those lines a little bit because that's what that's where, where your goals are taking you. That's where your visions are taking you. That's where your thoughts are taking you. Um, you know, be aware of them and adjust accordingly. Don't let that bumper hit you and pop you back to the middle a little bit. Don't let that friend's comment when you have a, a, a great idea about something for your life or your family, um, a business idea, something creative, you know, your, your, your art, your passion, and someone makes a sly comment and you shut down on it and you're now not pursuing it. These are just like the freaking bumpers and bowling. Like, okay. They're just there to keep you doing just as good as everybody else. Cause a hundred out of a hundred, if we're all one after another bowling in that lane with the bumpers, we're all going to knock down some pins at the end. Everybody. And so nobody, people want you to do all right, but they don't want you to do better than them. That's just human nature. You got to be aware of that. You got to be aware of that and get dialed in on, on what it is that you want and how you're going to get there. Don't be constrained by those bumpers because when you, when you realize it's there and you realize mentally that I'm no longer impacted and affected by these comments, by these constraints, by consuming in the background all this media crap and all these things I need to worry about and be scared of um, and, and avoid and all this crap, it frees up space in your mind to focus on things that you really, really care about and to live your perfect, unique God-given life. And press forward. And the crazy thing is, you're happy there. I don't know. It was something I heard. When we're born into perfection, then we're seduced into average. Everything seduces us into average without even thinking about it. So take the message, think about it, be aware of it. And hey, does this help me? Or does this hurt me? Whether it's books you're reading, music you're listening to, um, friends that you associate with, stuff that you put into your body. So I'm crushing this rain this morning. I'll tell you, this rain is helping me. 
This is not a bumper. Yeah, I can't. Mm. Oh, where'd you might go? I can't do those anymore. Do the jitters? Be, uh, they give me the jitters all the time, but the amount of jitters is what usually uh, bothers no, 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 no. me. Drank one on an empty stomach. Oh, no, 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 no. Can't yeah. do that. Talk to God a little bit. <laughs> no, you can't do that, man. Look, my morning this, this morning is crazy. And when I get to the afternoon, I'm straight. So I'm going to drink half of this, and I'm good. Can't drink the whole thing, though. Freaking mess me up. Yeah, I house like one of those, maybe two, before we do one of these. So, No good. No good. Hey, look, Jonathan, y'all, is headed out to Cali next week to do some big stuff. I'm proud of you. Thank you, thank you. It's crazy. You a little freaked out? Like I said, nothing uh, nothing really moves the needle in my daily life until it does. So, like, the day that I wake up and I feel like this has all affected my daily life, that's when I'll be excited by it. But for so now, Tuesday. It's, it's, time, it's time to work. It's <laughs> that's time right. Work. It is time to work. That's what you're going to do. So, and we'll share more about this stuff in the future, but we're excited for you. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, you know, we, we allude to some things you know, in the past episodes and stuff. And, and it's funny because a lot of the stuff we talk about, I feel like Jonathan is living and working through right now. I mean, we all are to a certain extent and degree, but it's really, really exciting. Um, when I see the work being done every week, I see the progress that you're making, man. And I see opportunities coming about and being available. It's, I'm just excited for you. I'm proud of you. And it's, it's going to be great. Yes, sir. Thank be great. you. Thank you. All right. Safe travels. Uh, we appreciate you all. Have a great, great week. Um, Robin Sharma, Everyday Heroes is the book. Um, I think there's like a hundred chapters in it, which is nuts, but it's, they're short. Like it's an, it's an easy read, but um, uh, you should pick it up. Amazon, you know, check the book out and it, just be aware, be aware of the bumpers at the bowling alley. That shit's not there to help you. That shit's there to keep you like everybody else. We love you. Peace.